So suppose that we have a signal x of t, which is a continuous time signal, and we want to achieve the convolution uh, derivation from this uh, signal that is the input x of t. So what we do is we simply use sample and hold approach. That is, you're going to pick one sample over here and extend it or hold it for a certain time and then pick again a value and hold it for a certain time and then again pick a value, hold it for a certain time and so on. So this blue is an estimate of x of t. So it's not actually x of t but an estimate of x of t. So this is our zero, this is say, the duration of this is simply delta. So let's say this is delta and two delta, 3 delta, this is minus delta, minus 2 delta, and so on. So in this sample and hold approach, or something that we call as a staircase approximation, we have approximated the black signal x of t into a estimate of that signal that is x hat of t. So we can simply make boxes identifying each particular sample value and the hold value as follows. So next, we can extract one particular sample. For example, we can extract this over here. And this is starting at delta and it is terminating at 2 delta. So we have this signal. Similarly, we can extract all of them. For example, we can extract this signal. And it was starting at minus 2 delta and terminating at minus delta. So we can have uh, each of these blocks written separately or drawn separately and we can write the expressions for them. So for that expressions, we are using this delta delta of t. This function simply says that uh, the value of height is going to be one over capital delta if uh, the time is between zero and delta and otherwise it's zero. So this is written in terms of a case function. So similarly, we can have something like the shifted version of this so that could be t minus delta this means that this is now shifted instead of here so we would have delta and this would be the signal one over delta and if it is shifted towards left side so this minus would become plus also note that this delta delta of t is linked to our direct delta function by an asymptotic limit that is when delta this width approaches zero so delta delta of t is simply our direct delta function right? so if this approaches zero the width approaches zero so this will convert to delta of t now using this function delta delta of t we can write an expression for each of these blocks so two are drawn over here but we you would have to draw all of them eventually let's write an expression for this particular part so this is simply uh, a signal which is starting at this point so this point is having x of t so at this point our x is simply at delta at this point whatever the value of x is we are going to take that value and that value is going to be multiplied by this function this function right and specifically note that the function is not at zero it is at delta and it goes until two delta so we are interested in something like this so we can express this which is delta delta of t minus delta so this is just giving us the height which is over here right but we also need the width and hence we multiply again with the variable uh, that is delta so this is just giving us the duration which we initially mentioned that it is delta so by this expression we are defining this rectangular function or rectangular signal which is a part of a composite signal over here similarly for here we can have simply x of minus 2 delta right delta delta of t plus 2 delta times the width of it which is delta width height and the value the instantaneous value or the specific value at a particular time 
right first we're going to uh, break all of this this one this one this one over here right and then we can write an uh, algebraic expressions for each of them and if we sum all of them together we're going to get x hat of t so our x hat of t is simply a summation of all of these rectangulars functions and that summation is from minus infinity to infinity say this signal is going to infinity and uh, minus infinity to infinity and then we have x of this is starting at delta right over for the second block it would start at 2 delta and third 3 delta and so on so we can have x of k delta right next we have that uh, rectangular or impulse function delta delta of t minus k delta times delta this one note that x hat of t is again if the limit tends to of delta tends to uh, zero so it is going to give us x of t that is if the width is approaching zero so this width is approaching zero we are taking a sample of the very very small duration of time this would mean that this submission would become now continuous after every instant you are taking uh, a new value so the summation would convert to an integration right and this is very small and this is an increment of that so all of this i can express as tau so this would be tau this whole thing would convert to delta function as i mentioned if this approaches zero so this converts to delta function t minus k delta which was over here now this converts to tau and this is very small so this will become the uh, variable of integration d tau right so this is our x of t x of t in terms of an integration and the estimate x hat of t in terms of a summation so from here we can simplify this further and we can say if we have this um, uh, integration from minus infinity to infinity and we keep x of tau as is but we take out the minus and say we have now tau minus t d tau from here uh, we can simplify this further by means of some intuition so say we have a signal x of tau that is we have the signal x of tau and it could be any signal and at the same time we have a function delta and delta of tau on tau so this is available at zero so if you flip it it would not make any difference so that is delta of tau is equal to delta of minus tau that is you're going to uh, scale first so this is the scaling first and then you're going to shift so if you're going to shift it so this means that you are having a shift of delta of minus tau minus t so from zero now it is moved to t and the axis is tau right if we multiply this one that is this function with x of tau if this is multiplied with this one so at time instant t we would have some function here so this is the only value that would remain and rest all of these values would multiply by zero and the eventual outcome would be zero so this integration we can simply write as minus infinity to infinity x of rather than tau now it is x of t because it's only valid on t on all, of, all other values of tau it is zero and then delta of uh, minus tau minus t d tau but note that this x of t is not a variable of this integration the variable of integration is tau so we can take this out this is something like a constant so we can take this out and we would be left with delta function minus again tau minus d d tau 
but if we are integrating any delta function by any shift from minus infinity to infinity so all of this is actually equal to 1 so we are left with x of t so this identifies that our whole process of summation and then taking this asymptotic limit and getting x of t in terms of any integration from minus infinity to infinity this can be uh, reverse engineered to get back our x of t so this means that this is correct and this is also correct so let us move further from this expression if we pass this x hat of t through a linear system and the linear system says that sum of weighted inputs leads to sum of weighted outputs so we can have an output y hat of t and the summation cause of linearity would still be there this weight value the value that we're going to pick would still be there because of linearity but now this function that is the rectangular function when it passes through a linear system we would have some sort of response and that response is for hk at, uh, at the shift version that is we are shifting it by k units right so this impulse response is hk of t and finally we have this function delta but if we pass this system through linear time invariant system so this would mean that we have an output which is again y hat of t from linearity this function this and this value would remain same that is sum of input from linearity would lead to sum of outputs so this would simply be x of k delta and this would remain as is delta so, but from time invariance if you have this function and you pass it through a time invariant system and say you're getting an output which is say h of t but if you shift this right to this point and again you pass it through the same system you would not have a new impulse response but rather you would have the same impulse response h of t but this is now shifted from uh, 0 to delta that is t minus delta so any shift at the input would lead to the same shift at the output not a new impulse response but the impulse response from 0 to delta which was over here and now it is shifted to t minus delta so hence this can be written as h of t minus the shift value that is k delta times delta also note that y of t is equal to limit when delta tends to zero y estimate of t which is coming from here if you make this very very small so estimate of the output would be equal to the actual output y of t so if delta approaches zero so we can express this as tau the summation would change to integration so minus infinity to infinity x of tau h of t again k delta would convert to tau and this variable the width would convert to the integration variable d tau so this is actually a very well known result which we call as a convolution integral so this is our convolution integral and the shorthand notation again is simply x of t convolve with h of t Let us understand this with the help of one example. 